Before we begin tonight's show, I would like to request a moment of silence to remember everyone who passed away on this day in 1976. You are our heroes and we thank you. Today we unpack the work that has been done by Rabi Property Group as well um, in putting together the Maggie Rowley Sinenjongo Assistance Fund. This is the Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Welcome. Today's guest is a writer, a real estate professional, and an adventurer. She has spent 17 years in commercial and retail real estate. She serves as the communications manager for Rabi Property Group and has been doing some work in the Maggie Rowley Sinenjongo Assistance Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Natalie Dupria. Natalie, good evening and happy youth day to you. Hi, good evening to me. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Let's jump in and talk about the Maggie Rowley um, Sinenjongo Assistance Fund and popularly known as MRSSAF. Um, what is the mission for this um, foundation or for this fund and when was it established? I think it's important to first um, hear who was Maggie Rowley and why is it named after her. Sure. So Maggie Rowley was a journalist by trade. Um, she worked for Century City, the Century City Precinct from August 97. And she also worked for Rabi Property Group for over uh, 20 years. And she had a, a robust energy, love and passion um, for Sinanyongo High School and its learners. Um, she was instrumental in um, bringing Sinanyongo to the attention of Rabi. Um, the school was um, being held in, in containers. I mean, there were no facilities, no air car, no airflow. And these learners were, you know, just um, getting by. The pass rate was a, a, a pathetic 27%. And Maggie became the empathetic, empathic driving force and mother of these young lives. Um, tragically, Maggie passed away um, 1 January 2019 which left quite a chasm for Rabi and obviously for Sinanyongo High School. And um, Rabi, in remembrance of Maggie, um, founded this Maggie Rowley Sinanyongo Assistance Fund. Um, you know, just to commemorate her tremendous impact mm -hmm. and just to continue her legacy and the burning passion that she had for uplifting the youngsters of Sinanyongo High School. Um, so what it is, it's not a bursary, just to make that very clear. Um, so the learners still apply for NISFAS. NISFAS um, will immediately um, cancel their funding if you um, accept another bursary. So it's actually very important to understand that it's not a bursary. It's actually to um, fill in the gap what NISFAS does not cover. And one would think, okay, fine, you know, NISFAS um, pays for books and the pays for tuition. What else is there? But I think that, um, you know, it's very important to understand that there is so many things that people take for granted. Um, it will be bedding. You know, if, if, if you go and register at the university, you are expected to bring your own bedding, your own kettle, um, your own crockery. Um, you know, you get a list of clothing that you need to purchase. Um, you don't have data, you don't have air time, you don't have a computer. Um, you know, these, these learners come from Joe Slovo um, uh, informal settlement, and it's not possible um, most of the time for the parents to um, take care of the children what that is concerned. Um, it's, there's quite a high number, I would say, easily uh, 70 to 80 percent of these learners where the, um, the mother is most definitely not employed um, and in a lot of cases, both parents. So what we do is um, we take care of those everyday needs. Um, we assist the students that get a monthly allowance. We take care, we, we take them to the dorm. We make sure that they are you know, registered with the correct um, university or Technicon. Um, we ensure that they've got accommodation. And then what we do from there is we, we support them um, throughout their, their, their journey, uh, which I think is also important. It's not just about um, supplying the um, needs 
in terms of a physical um, requirements, but you know, there's a bit of mentorship uh, required, there's a bit of advice that they need, um, and so on. The best part about it is really just identifying a need and ensuring that we meet it. And that sounds like what um, the Student Jongo Assistant Fund really does. So let's talk about um, its its future plans in terms of assisting other schools. You know, you're, you're speaking about how it's it's assisting Student Jongo high school students currently. Um, are, is there plans for adopting more schools and adding that to the portfolio? Um, there are no plans what that is concerned. You know, Rabi has um, has taken Sin and Yongo on as its main CSI um, initiative, as we've previously mentioned. And um, the Maggie Rowley um, Assistant Fund is only a portion of that. Rabi also employs additional teachers. Um, we are in constant communication with the principal, Mrs. Napote, about what the school needs. So Rabi looks... Um, holistically at the school. It is not only um, through these students who, who go to university that we look after. So um, I think, you know, from a resource and a financial point of view, it becomes quite, uh, you know, uh, restrictive. We are already, you know, if you, if you calculate how many students we'll have in the, the next five years, it will be, you know, five students at university. Um, so, yes, it gets a bit, um, you know, <laughs> financially straining. Um, so we will not be opening it up to other schools at this stage. Sure. And what are the obstacles that you have encountered since um, beginning to fund these students? Because with, with so many things that have been happening, COVID happening, so many um, changes that have even happened, even in the education spaces, what are some of those um, challenges that you have encountered and um, how have you guys solved for them? Yeah, I think as I just mentioned, one of the challenges or, or cha growing challenges is obviously um, financing all of this. Um, you know, pre-COVID, we had, um, you know, we had very generous sponsors. But I think as, um, you know, as companies become constrained, as the economy becomes constrained, um, those, those um, donors become uh, f a little bit fewer. We are obviously very grateful for anybody um, who, are, who are donating or have donated. Um, towards um, uh, Seninyongo High School. So I would think that is one. And then secondly, I think um, just also understanding uh, what these learners need in their tertiary uh, journey. Um, I mean, uh, we are celebrating um, Youth Day mm. where the children at, in 1976, um, you know, stood up against being taught in a language that's not their home language. And um, the learners in Sun was very fortunate. They are being taught in their home language of Isikosa, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and what, what we are finding, however, is that when they do go to universities where the teaching language is in English, that there is a, you know, there, there are additional resources that we have to assist them with. Because um, you can think that the that the quality and the, um, not the quality, but uh, how can I say, um, it's a lot more difficult, it's a lot more advanced from grade 12. Mm. Um, yeah, and then obviously also, you know, they have to stand at the same level of children all over the country. Yeah. I mean, if you think our, our student goes to Stellenbosch, and so does so many thousands of um privileged and non-privileged children and they all just stand on the same basis. So I think it's 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 so important from their own self-esteem um, to also get to grips with that that yes I can compete um, you know with with anybody. I have deserved it um, to be here. So so we try um, we try from from that point of view to also assist them. COVID was a bit difficult. Um, especially for our first year, um, our, our first recipient um, of the Maggie Rowley Assistant Fund, um, which was Supela Dube. Uh, Dube. Um, he, he did struggle a bit. I mean, uh, you know, you're used to a, to a vibey community in an informal settlement. You're used to having your friends around you and your family. And now you are stuck in a, in a dorm room. 
you yeah. know, and you can't go out and there are certain regulations. So um, I think he found that quite difficult, but we tried, um, you know, our best to, to assist him where we could. Thank you so much for that and really inspiring and encouraging work that you do. And in the spirit of celebrating Youth Day, hopefully other uh, property groups, you know, property home associations and different groups of people in the property space, you know, pick up the need like you have and really meet it. Thank you so much for joining us, Natalie, and have a great Thank one. You. Thank Thanks you. so much. A great man, Martin Luther King, said, we are not the makers of history, but we are made by history. Let's jump into today's edition of South African History. Youth Day was initially known as Soweto Day. The new government chose to call it Youth Day to commemorate the role the young people, who, the young people played um, in overcoming the apartheid regime. South Africa is truly a young nation. South Africa's population is largely made out of youth. Those who are below the age of 35 constitute 65% of the overall South African population. Youth Day was officially made a public holiday after Nelson Mandela became president in 1994. The National Youth Development Agency is a South African-based established um, primarily to address the challenges faced by the, the, the nation's youth. Peaceful protest. June 16 was supposed to be a three-day event, starting on the date and ending on the 18th of June. This is the final day that was meant to, uh, the march was meant to end in Orlando Stadium. That's it, folks. Learning never stops because life never stops teaching. So it is important for us to always remember our South African history. The winner of the 500 Rand cash prize today for the most interaction is... That is going to be announced in the comment section. So ensure that you catch that winner there. Join us again tomorrow for another insight-packed episode. And of course, don't forget to like, share, as well as follow us on all social media platforms. And remember, a healthy dose of property information might just be what you need to get you back on your A-game. This is the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi. Have a beautiful youth day.